morning. Good to have you with us this morning on Palm Sunday as uh, we begin Holy Week, Passion Week, uh, the week that we mourn the death of Jesus and three days later we celebrate his resurrection. It's quite an emotional uh, week coming up. Uh, this morning we uh, will uh, be listening to words from St. Peter. We have been talking about grace this entire Lenten season, and we've been encountering various characters from the Bible uh, and seeing how God has been gracious to them, his amazing grace. This morning, uh, looking at St. Peter and his fear, and of course all of us have fears in our lives. Uh, sometimes as I grow older, they seem to multiply uh, more. Uh, than perhaps they did, or maybe I'm a little smarter now and know what to fear versus when I was younger and I didn't know what to fear. So it, it addresses us as well. It's not just St. Peter who has fear that he needs to deal with, it's us who have fear. And how do we counter that fear? And we'll find out it's by God's grace, as it always is. So this morning, uh, we are going to begin with a very traditional Palm Sunday hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up. O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. This morning, our uh, first reading for Palm Sunday is taken from John 12, and you will note that it is a responsive reading. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, 
sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This morning, as we pause for confession and absolution, we think of Peter and his fear, and we also think of our own fear and unfaithfulness, and for these things we ask for forgiveness. Peter boasted of his devotion, but then denied his Lord. The crowds on Palm Sunday shouted glad hosannas to the king. But by the end of the week, their acclaim fell silent as Jesus, crowned with thorns, went to the cross. We too, by our sins, turn away from our Lord. So let us confess our sins to him and ask his forgiveness. Almighty God, while we boast of our faithfulness and devotion in our thoughts, words, and actions, we often follow our own desires, turning away from your will and your ways, instead of following the commands and guidance of your holy word. We listen to the temptations of the world around us. When we have opportunities to witness for our Lord, we fall silent. As you showed grace to Simon Peter, turn to us in grace and forgive our sins. God has shown his grace to us. He sent his son to die on the cross, taking onto himself the sins of the world and suffering the penalty of death that we deserve. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, you are forgiven and restored, called to serve others in the name of Jesus, our King and Savior. Let us pray. Almighty God, Simon Peter proudly boasted of his faithfulness and his willingness to die for Jesus. Then when the time came, he denied the Lord and swore that he never even knew him. We too are often less than loyal. When others question our faith, we remain silent and have no answers for them. We do not always live in a way that reflects Jesus' love. Yet you have forgiven us as you forgave Peter, and restored him to service. You have called us to serve others in your name and to be witnesses for our Savior. Help us to live in humble service, as Jesus did the humble King, who entered Jerusalem to take up his cross for us. Hear our prayer in his name. Amen. We continue with the hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Please be seated.
Good morning. The Old Testament reading from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow will be cut off, and he will speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you to double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish, blemish or spot. He was forsaken before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel lesson. The gospel lesson this morning is uh, taken actually from the Maundy Thursday reading, uh, but it gives us a little hint of Simon Peter and uh, how God, especially in Jesus, treated this man uh, who at this point in time is uh, in need of a lot of grace. The, the reading is from Luke 22. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. We continue our worship by confessing in the words of the ancient Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten <laughs> Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Our sermon hymn this is Rejoice, O Pilgrim Throng. Grace, peace, and mercy be to all of you, from God the Father, His Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I said this morning we're going to be looking at St. Peter. We're going to hear from the words of St. Peter, both in the Gospel and, of course, the uh, letters of St. Peter that we have in the New Testament. And you notice that the uh, sermon title is called Grace for the Fearful. Grace for the Fearful. This entire next week is a journey of our Lord of faith for him, but also grace. From his entry into Jerusalem, which we heard about this morning, to the cross and through the open tomb, it is all his grace, all for our sake, all for our salvation. And we know that among those who followed him on this path was his disciple Peter. Now, you know, Peter is regarded as the lead disciple of the Lord. He was the first disciple that Jesus chose. And he is often seen as a representative of all the disciples. But we have to beware of putting Peter on a pedestal. He needed saving just as much as all of us did. And he was the first to say so. You may remember his words, Lord, save me. Peter said those words as he was sinking in the waters of Lake Galilee. You remember at first he was daring enough that he thought he could walk on water, and indeed scripture says he did for a while. But his faith was diverted from his Lord and fixated instead on the wind and the waves coming toward him. And the Bible says he began to sink. Peter was not sinking just under water, he was sinking under fear. The faith the man had gave way to fear. And this would not be the first or the last time that his faith would give way to fear. And in that regard, he is truly representative of all the other disciples, including those sitting here this morning. Because do we not also succumb to fear when crises arise? When we are sorely tested beyond our ability to see what's going on at the present. However, truly bold and confident Peter may have seemed at times, his nagging fear continued to haunt him, and that fear would lead him to sink on more than one occasion. But Christ's amazing grace comes even for those who are fearful. Even in his time of crisis, as well as our time of crisis, Jesus reaches out and catches us, just as he caught Peter sinking beneath the water. That image of our Lord holding his hand out to Peter to pull him out of the water is helpful for us as we continue to journey in our faith, understanding how much our Lord loves us. 
Now, Peter's journey began with the Lord calling him to be a disciple. In the Gospel of Luke, we are told that Jesus encountered him while he was on the Sea of Galilee washing his nets after a rather disappointing night of fishing. Peter would receive a grace he did not expect that day. You may remember Jesus said, Put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch of fish. Now, while Peter may have recognized Jesus' authority as a rabbi, as a teacher and a leader, I don't think he thought much of Jesus' ability to catch fish. But the Bible tells us that he let down his net anyway, and surprise, they caught so many fish that their nets began to break. As a matter of fact, Scripture tells us in Luke that there were two boats that were filled, two fishing boats filled with fish, and they began to sink. At the sight of this, there's a very contrite confession that comes out of this man, Peter, because he fell on his knees in front of Jesus and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. I'm sure Peter like all the other disciples that were there that day, was truly amazed at this catch of fish. But I think what also amazed him was the grace that was digging into a deeper problem that Peter had, and that was fear. In this case, he's deeply afraid to be in the presence of a holy God. And the Holy Spirit opens his eyes at that moment and says, Peter, this is the Messiah who is standing in front of you, the very holy God you've been looking for your entire life. And indeed, considering who he is in standing in front of, he should have feared. But he does not understand at this point in time the path that Jesus was taking for him and for us that goes way beyond our fears. When Christ called you, in your baptism, he called you not to be afraid of his love and his grace because he'll always be there to catch you. Indeed, scripture tells us that Jesus said to Peter, do not be afraid. As in the song Amazing Grace, Peter, because of grace, had his heart fearful. That's how he began, to fear. As Amazing Grace says, grace taught my heart to fear. Well, that's the work of the Holy Spirit, to put us under the law so that we repent. But Amazing Grace goes on to say that grace also relieves our fears. And so with his fears relieved, Jesus called Peter and his companions to a new mission path that they would take over the next three years and the rest of their lives with Jesus. He said to them, from now on, forget fish, you're going to catch people. When we think of all the sinking and fear that was true for Peter, we have to consider also, do we not, that the very name Peter means rock. <laughs> and as you well know, rocks sink. But interestingly enough, in the Bible, rocks are also foundations for buildings. Peter later will confess Jesus as the Messiah. And that confession of Peter came to represent the rock on which this church stands. The rock that upholds the very foundation of the Christian church today. That rock of Peter's confession was a bold and faithful confession. He said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus would say that this faithful confession that Peter makes is in itself a grace given by God the Father to Peter as a gift. 
that same confession joins Peter with us. Because that is the foundational stone of this church. It is what we witness to. It is a strength upon which this church, Fishers of Men, is built. The Holy Christian Church is not built on St. Peter, the man. It's built on the confession of his faith. And Jesus said, not even the gates of hell are going to prevail against this confession. And so when we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and the Messiah, what happens is we are loosening chains that bind all of humanity and we set them free from their bondage to sin and death. Now that all sounded good to Peter. But Jesus also reminded Peter that this path of grace that Jesus the Messiah is going to follow first has to lead to cross and death. And when Jesus told this to Peter and the other disciples, they could not accept it. You remember, he rebuked Jesus. But as he begins to do this, this rock begins to sink. Jesus calls Peter a scandalous stumbling block, even refers to him as Satan. Indeed, there is no path into Jerusalem of Jesus as the glorious Messiah without the cross. The grace comes on the heels of passion. And that's going to be a lesson for Peter to learn when he was with Jesus on Transfiguration Mountain. When Jesus was transfigured in all his glory. Peter did not fully grasp at that moment in time what that was all about either. He did not yet understand that glory will not come apart from the cross. And so he says on the Mount of Transfiguration, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He's excited. But the Bible then tells us that a cloud overshadowed the three disciples. And from the cloud a voice came saying this is my son my beloved with him I am well pleased listen to him and at that scripture tells us that Peter and the other two disciples fell to their knees and were overcome by fear we can understand why but once again Jesus came to them he touched them, raised them up, saying again to these fearful disciples, Do not be afraid. From their knees, looking up, all they saw was Jesus. And Jesus said, You are not to speak of this, this transfiguration sight that you've seen, until after I have risen from the dead. Peter certainly had a lot to learn about grace. And that time came soon enough after the Mount of Transfiguration. In that week that we are celebrating this coming week, during the Passion Week, Jesus told his disciples of the dangers that would lay ahead, how they will be scandalized by the cross that he would mount on Good Friday. And he told every last one of them they will flee. But Peter denounced that danger, as we heard this morning, boasting that he would never be scandalized to follow Jesus all the way, and that he would never desert Jesus, never. His very words, even though all become deserters, meaning those guys, those eleven, they'll desert you, I will not, Jesus. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you, Jesus. But Jesus says to him, truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, Peter, you're going to deny me three times. And so it was. In the night when Jesus was on trial in the court, 
that Peter found himself warming himself by the fire in the courtyard below. And a little servant girl came by of the high priest and recognized him as a companion of Jesus, and he denied it. He said, I do not know or understand what you are talking about, little girl. He tried to escape this scene. Scripture tells us he found another area of the courtyard where he wouldn't be so easily noticed. But as he did, the rooster crowed. And then the same girl who recognized him earlier spots Peter again. And she says to the others in the courtyard, this man, he's one of them. Once again, Peter denies it. And finally, one of the other bystanders who's there confronts him, saying, you are certainly one of Jesus' disciples because you're a Galilean. And Scripture tells us that Peter brought down curses upon himself and openly swore an oath before these people. I do not know this man you're talking about. And at that very moment, the rooster crowed the second time. Scripture says Peter realized what he had done. He had done that which he boasted he would not do. He denied Jesus Christ. He denied that there was any connection between him and Jesus Christ. Once again, Peter's fear got the best of him. And Scripture says in his anguish and anxiety, he fell again to his knees in tears, weeping bitterly for this sinful, scandalous wrong that he said would never come to him. But Jesus isn't done with Peter yet. Even in this fearful denial and betrayal of Jesus that severed all bonds of their connection, Jesus would never sever his love and grace for Peter. He would go to the cross for the fearful Peter and for us all. And when Jesus was raised from the dead, he would show Peter his wounded hands, his pierced side, calling Peter not to sorrow, but to rejoice in this promise of Jesus' grace that would not let Peter go. Once again, Jesus the Messiah caught and held Peter in his crucified hands. And once again, Jesus would call Peter to catch people in the grace of his promise and to feed others in his healing and forgiving mercy. But the path for Peter would also come by his own passion and suffering for the faith. But the Bible tells us that Peter was emboldened to pick up his cross and follow Jesus because he knew Jesus would never let him go. Peter would testify before all through his letters that Christ's amazing grace is what is available to all who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so we hear Peter write, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Holy Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And later, when Peter was on trial before those who were critical of his proclamations about the grace of Jesus the Christ, Peter again confessed boldly, we must obey God rather than human authority. Peter would also come to a recognition that he underestimated the extent of God's grace for all the nations. He thought Jesus only came for the Jews. But he came to realize that Jesus came not just for the Jews, Jews first, yes, but for all people around the world. And as once as he confessed boldly, now he comes to grasp fully that this faith that he has as a gift from Jesus the gates of hell cannot prevail against his grace. 
And that Jesus wanted him to present this to all people so that all people can be set free from sin and death, from fear and abandonment. So later, Peter writes, I truly understand that God shows no partiality. And again, in his letters, as he addresses those who are being persecuted, he says, come to him, meaning Jesus, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, just like him, Peter, the rock, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You and I are called to take the same path. The path of the cross. The path of suffering. And to do it with the same holy confidence that St. Peter had. And as we do this, we will find that Jesus will catch us. And that he will then send us out to others with the sure and amazing grace of his promises. And so we follow the very path of Jesus to the cross, trusting that our Lord will take us through the cross into his resurrection and glory. And as we close, we hear again what Peter had to say about this in summary. summary. He said, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on Jesus because he cares for you. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the praise forever and ever. We continue our worship with the gathering of the offering. Let us rise for the prayer of the church. This morning, as you look at all the prayers that we have in our bulletin, I want to highlight a few of them. Uh, continue to pray for the family of Rick Elf, who passed away last Saturday. Also for the family of Chuck 
Doughty, member of this church who passed away unexpectedly in New Mexico. Uh, our president, Don Haney, uh, who is recovering after a light stroke on Thursday morning. Uh, Retha Wheeler, uh, who was taken to the hospital last night with some heart problems. We have not uh, received any new uh, word on her condition, but we will continue to pray for that situation. And also we want to give God thanks for the rain and hopefully the anticipated rain yet this week and continuing. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Lord Jesus entered Jerusalem during the last week of his earthly ministry. He came as a humble king to take up his final steps to the cross. Help us to follow in his steps, humble servants, and living examples of your love in the world. Gracious Lord. Almighty God, today we call out, Hosanna, save us now. We know and believe that Jesus is our King. Through his redeeming death and his triumphant resurrection, he has saved us and brought us into his kingdom. He calls us to follow in his footsteps, to walk in love, and to forgive as we have been forgiven. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us. Almighty God, Peter boasted of his loyalty, but failed and denied his Lord. Yet his Lord died for his sins and for ours. For Jesus' sake, you forgave Peter and you have forgiven us. As Simon Peter was called to feed your sheep, you have called us to serve your people in love. Empower us by your Spirit to serve you by serving others. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us. Almighty God, so many of your people, the sheep of your flock, are suffering through illness, depression, and anxiety, through grief and loss. Have mercy on them, Lord, especially the names we have mentioned this morning, but many others who are in need of your prayer that we know of, whether it be healing of body, soul, or spirit. Lord, heal them according to your will. And lead us to serve them in love, that we might help them in their need, and to bring them the comfort of your word. Gracious Lord. Have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, you desire that all people would be saved and come to know the truth. Empower us by your Spirit to be witnesses for our King. Help us to grow in faith through the study of your Word so that we are prepared to answer those who ask about our beliefs. Do not let us fall silent when we have the opportunity to witness to our Savior. Help us to proclaim repentance and forgiveness in Jesus' name. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us. And hear our prayer. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks. It is truly proper, correct, and beneficial that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of humankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose their life might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we exalt and amplify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now may this peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, to take the sin of the world away. O Jesus Christ,
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body, soul, and spirit to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. To the Son of David, blessed is he who comes, comes in, in the, the name, name of, the of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. We conclude our service with the hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. <clears throat> Uh, we have a Bible study uh, beginning at 